Hi, my name is Sho. I'm a medical doctor, and I used to work for the emergency room. I was an emergency doctor riding helicopters to rescue and save people's lives. And today, my talk is about how people and patients like you, not the doctors, but you, can save each other's lives. I came to realize this truth through my career as a medical doctor, as a scientist, and as an entrepreneur. So, after graduating from university and working as a medical doctor, I worked in a several distinct environments. These are photos of myself when I was working on a remote island and on a ship. It's me on a ship's deck. This is the medical consultation room. And this is my room. Once the ship leaves the harbor, it wouldn't come back for an entire three months. And also, this is the medical helicopter. You would ride the helicopter and pick up the patient and transport the patient to the nearby hospital. This is the urban area of Tokyo where I came from. And since I was working for the Red Cross Hospital, we went to rescue the casualties after the great earthquake and the tsunami in Japan in 2011. So, mostly throughout my career, I worked in a rather harsh environment. There were patients with strokes, heart attacks, or severe traffic accidents, and they were in their most severe conditions. All of them were in life-threatening conditions. And the chances of saving their lives were at most 50%. And in cases like when a patient has had a cardiac arrest, which means that his or her heart has not been pumping for a while, unfortunately, there's not much that we can do. But still, we do our best, and all our medical team dedicates our effort towards the patient. And we were very proud of ourselves when we were able to achieve patient recovery. But now, let's stop here for a while and think about it. When a patient's life is saved, to whom do you think the credit is due? Do only the doctors deserve it? Because we have been ready and studying and practicing so hard every day? Or maybe a medical scientist who developed medicine or methods for life resuscitation. I once thought that I deserved the credit, but later in my life, I thought myself that I was wrong. People and patients also deserve this credit for saving the patients, and here's why. I would like to share three memories of three different patients. Each story is important to me, because each has taught me a lesson. This first story comes from an isolated island in Japan. In my 20s, I was working on this island, and there were only 100 inhabitants on this island. Of course, I was the only medical professional there. But regardless of my profession, I developed friendly relationship with all the islanders, calling each other by our names, not like with former titles, like Mr. Somebody, as you might in Tokyo. Everyone on the island regarded each other as a member of a large family. One day on this island, there was a traffic accident. And this severely injured patient was in urgent need of blood transfusion. In large cities like Tokyo, there would be enough supplies of blood packs stored in the refrigerator. But on a remote island, Obtaining blood is not a realistic option. So in this case, what we did was that we rushed to the village hall and we grabbed the village microphone that was connected to the village speakers and shouted out for a request of blood. If you have blood type AB, please come to the hospital. There is a severe injured patient who needs your help. And guess what happened? In 15 minutes, there were lines of healthy people willing to donate their blood. And thanks to all their help, we were able to save the patient. And 
All I could do, and all I did, was request for blood. It was not I, but the local people who saved this patient. This is the first story. And the second story comes. This story is about a patient in Tokyo. She was in her 20s, and she had this certain rare disease. There were only a few hundreds of known cases of this disease, so there were little information on how to treat it. We consulted medical dictionaries, but limited information were found. My colleagues and I also diligently searched for scientific papers day and night until we came across this case report from Brazil. And this patient in Brazil had the same rare disease. The patient in Brazil went through an unprecedented medical procedure. This medicine was not intended for her specific condition or symptoms, but anyways, the medicine was prescribed and it proved effective. That's what the report said. I read through the report. I told my patient in Tokyo about the report and the patient in Brazil. We took discussions over and over, and I asked her if she was committed to undergoing this procedure, and she agreed. Luckily and thankfully, this medicine worked well for her too. And we were glad that she could leave the hospital in a much healthier situation. And one day afterwards, she visited our hospital without an appointment. And she greeted me with, hi, doctor, do you remember me? To which I responded, yes, of course, what's up? She expressed her gratitude, not only to our hospital, but also to the doctor and the patient in Brazil that was in the case report, stating that they too had saved her life. And she also said that she wanted her case to be self-reported too to medical congresses. I was amazed and I felt her selflessness to be beautiful and admirable. It's also important to note that she would not get any compensation from her experience being shared at medical congresses. But still, her willingness to contribute to medical science and save other people's life will surely benefit the future and save another patient's life. This was a remarkable story. And now we come to the third and the final story. This example illustrates how patients can be connected to each other and save each other's life in this era of AI. After my experience on the remote island and in Tokyo, I founded my own startup. We developed an AI medical camera that I have with me right now. This is a medical aura camera. And using this camera, you can take pictures of a patient's throat. And the AI would give analysis to the inflammation or the swellings or the redness of the patient's throat in order to provide diagnosis. This device, having passed clinical trials in Japan, is already approved by the Japanese government and is used all over Japan, especially in this winter period, in order to give diagnosis to infectious diseases. In the past, it might have been a custom practice for patients to show gratitude to their doctors for giving them their diagnosis. But these days, I'm seeing that this process is becoming the other way around. And I'm happy to share to you that doctors, too, are expressing gratitude to their patients. AI technology doesn't just come from nowhere. All medical AIs are developed or trained using patient information, which means that the more data there are, the more accurate the AI becomes. Each AI examination can also contribute to the development of medicine and AI using the patient information gathered. And this could lead to proper diagnoses in the future. With proper handling of information security and privacy, one patient's contribution can save another's, another's life, especially in this era of AI. So what do these three stories have in common? The blood transfusion on a remote island, 
the case reports from Brazil and from Japan, and medical development through AI procedures. Each story reminds me of the faces of the patients being rescued. And at the same time, each story reminds me of the faces of the patients or the people or the islanders that are helping each other. So if patients are the ones who are saving other patients, what role do we doctors play? We might sit in the middle of the room and connect patients to other patients in order to tell them that, hey, your life could be saved because these guys have donated your blood. Or your disease can be cured thanks to the findings from this other patient. Or we were able to give you diagnoses on behalf of all the patients and all the medical information that has constructed this AI. So, with 15 years of professional experience, I've come to realize that doctors are not the only ones developing medicine. But patients, too, play a critical role in the development of medicine, which means that you all have the power within yourself, whether you are healthy or in a certain medical condition. And the use of machine learning is even accelerating this collaborative process. So visiting the hospital should not be a concern or a burden, as we doctors are always there for you, not only to assist you, but to connect you to future patients and empower you so that you can be helpful for the future, especially in this era of AI. Thank you.